model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ral, and this week I'm going to feature a build of mine here, and this is a 1971 Chevelle SS454, and this is an AMT kit, because AMT and MPC both issued uh, 71 Chevelles. I've never had the MPC kit, but I have had the AMT kit, but neither one has ever been reissued, so they're pretty hard to find, pretty rare nowadays. Um, they do come up, uh, this was a built-up that I had purchased on uh, eBay, and I restored it to like this. And uh, I, I do have others. I have another one that's a mint unbuilt kit, and I've had another builder, but I sold it off. But uh, this is one I actually built. Uh, this is an older build from 2006, but it has a lot of personal meaning to this particular build. And for those of you that uh, have ever wanted to build a model of a car that you have owned, this is one for me and uh, while I technically don't own the car uh, many of you have seen my tour video and I've spoke about it my wife has a 71 Chevelle and she's had it a very long time it used to look a lot like this one did but uh, this is not uh, an actual build of her car it's in the colors as it was at the time uh, it is not like that now the car progressed and we ended up building it exactly how uh, we both wanted it with compromises and, and you know how stuff like that can go and we still have the car today So I'm going to throw up a lot of pictures. So even at the end, there'll be a lot of pictures uh, Going on of, of this car the build uh, The real car and what is what it is and those of you guys who listen to my intro and love the sound of that rumbling V8 engine That is the actual 71 Chevelle. It's in our garage. My brother uh, had a, a special recording equipment from when he did some stuff and went and recorded concerts. So we used his uh, special microphone that uh, and recorded that in our driveway. So that, that rumbling V8 you hear uh, that uh, I put in the, the soundtrack, that is the 71 Chevelle. And some of my comments, I, I love that, you know, there was one that was, hey, that uh, car that I hear rumbling, it definitely has Flowmasters. I recognize the sound of Flowmasters, but please tell me that's not a a small block or a Chevy or something like that and he hit the nail on the head because it was a small block Chevy and it made me laugh and, and I, I love that comment I just kind of cherish it because that's what the car is unfortunately it's not my my big block uh, Mopar wagon running because that one hasn't been running for a while and I will get to that one this is the only one of all my cars that they actually make a model of and I had to find this one and it was tough to find but uh, out of my cars but at the time uh, my wife bought this car back in 1995, and it's a 71 Malibu with a 307. That's what we started with. And I always envisioned it a little bit more muscular, put the SS hood on it, put the stripes on it, do a few things to it, and uh, we built it up slowly from then. But uh, it was just a plain old Malibu, nothing nothing to brag about. And uh, But it was a two-door, it was a nice car, Arizona car, pretty rust-free. Some of my videos, you'll see uh, pictures of it in various stages. But we had slowly built it, and over the years, uh, we had to do some suspension work to it. So we built all the suspension, made it better, and made it handle. We really like cars that handle, put disc brakes in it. It had drum brakes originally, but we put factory discs in it. So this car is not stock in, in any way or form, but it looks fairly stock. So many people say it's stock, or think it's a stock SS, and it's not. And I always thought it'd be cool to make it an SS clone, but we never put uh, the SS emblems on the car. And I left the Malibu rocker moldings on there on purpose. So you'll see some of that stuff, but it's not depicted in this build. And this one, I built this one truly as an SS with the 454 in it. So, it, you know, the AMT gives you all of that. So I put the 454 in it and put the stripes. And I did black interior because ours had a, a saddle beige interior with white that was its original color combination and when I repainted the car uh, you'll see some photos of that we repainted the car white which was this fifth paint job and I did some body work but I didn't do a whole lot of body work to it because I knew that that was just a temporary paint job and I went and painted the stripes on it and funny story about that the model depicted the real car because it's fine now but when I was building this model I painted it and then I had problems with the stripes these are Keith Marks decals and he provided the, the decals for me and I had I ended up buying two sets so I used a set on the first time I painted it 
and something happened where the decal wrinkled. So here's a photo of the wrinkling that was going on. And then when I painted the real car, I painted it white. And then um, like a year later, and I don't even think it was a year later, I got the stencil kit and I painted the stripes on it in black. So, and then I masked the whole car with this plastic um, cover that meant to cover the entire car. And I cut out just over the trunk and the hood and masked it so I can spray the stripes. Well, the plastic was under the rear bumper and it doesn't show in the photos, but while it was out drying, the wind picked it up and rolled it up over the trunk and I had a whole bunch of uh, parts of the paint that were kind of messed up because of plastic. It stuck to the plastic and it just kind of marred up the paint a little bit, much like when you get your fingerprint in a model. So in aspect, the model copied that, but I ended up having to strip the paint job and doing it again. And I don't know what white I used on this model, just some white I had, much like the real car. I didn't go with the factory 71 white because it's more of a yellow tan. I wanted more of a brighter white. So I think I, you know, I think it's the same uh, code 50 white that my S10 Extreme is that I painted the Chevelle because it was a real common white and they still use it today. But that was back in 2000, I think 2001, 2000 was when I painted the car white, the real car. But I built this model kit in 2006. And I always wanted to put these wheels on it. They're a lot harder to find. Um, I don't know about now, but we ended up putting rally wheels on it. And we still have rally wheels on it today. We didn't go big 17-inch wheels, which I like that look, but my wife does not. And uh, But it's her car, so we made those choices. But we've had a lot of fun with it. Um, I built up a 350 engine for it. It had a 307. We had uh, the balancer went out on it, chewed up the crank. The motor was toast. But I worked at a GM dealership, so buying a, a 350 crate engine, put that in there, and then I eventually hopped it up to 375 horsepower, which is what it's at now with Vortec heads. So it's a fairly stock looking engine, but uh, it, it's not stock. It's got a cam in it, Vortec heads, um, hopped up uh, a bit. It's not crazy. But she's a fun car to drive. But all suspension is built. It's all urethane suspension. It's got all Hotchkiss tubular upper and lower arms in the front. Hotchkiss suspension in the rear. Big sway bars, front and back. Stiffer springs. Double adjustable shocks all the way around from QA1, which it has now. But we took it back in 2003. We had a lot of the suspension was already done on the real car. And you'll love these photos. We went and solo raced it. That was autocross at the time, but they had the solo and solo two events where you race through cones for time. We call it autocrossing now, but back then it was SCCA and it was a solo two event is what they called it. And we brought the car there and it's kind of funny. We had people that like, this is a straight line car. This is a drag racing car. Why'd you bring this here? And I was like, well, we built this thing to turn and I want to see what it's going to do. And even the class guys were like, well, we really don't have a class for this. We have, you know, novice, we have street prepared, and we have stock. And it's like when we were talking about what it is, and well, you're technically a novice because you haven't done this before. And the car isn't stock, so we're going to put it in street prepared. But there really isn't any cars of this caliber in that class. The closest thing they had was there was somebody there with a 77 Corvette. And he was... Um, uh, doing like 44 seconds through the course and I ended up doing 39 seconds through the course and that's with a hopped up 350 but still had my turbo 350 tranny it had a 2400 stall and a shift kit but I still have my 10 bolt open rear end with no posi in it now the car has a 12 bolt with a 355s and a posi actually 373s and a posi but it also has an overdrive tranny in it now that uh, it didn't have back then so this particular build though um, it's an AMT kit and it's got some flaws there's some molded goofy molded in lines right here I sanded off the door handles and put those door handles on there interior is pretty much right out of the kit um, if it's even going to focus on it because it's pretty dark but uh, our real car does not have uh, the super sport dash we kept the Malibu dash we kept bucket seats and now or the bench seat is what we kept on it and didn't put buckets in it so we kept a lot of the Malibu flare on it but at the time when I built this the model kit has the cal induction hood our real car had one from an actual heavy Chevy hood which is the domed hood but not the cal induction 
and now it has a cal induction hood on it we swapped and i bought all of that stuff the hood's cheap um it's really not much more to, to go from the hood but when you buy the valve the valve on the inside all the switches and vacuum the air cleaner and everything to make it fully functional it's a lot more money i mean at the time the hood was like 250 bucks but when you buy all the other parts to to make it functional it was well over a thousand dollars to convert the hood so it was quite expensive to get all that stuff but it's all functional now on the real car um, i did photo etch hood pins so you can see those here and uh, here's the stripes and I also had some issue with the stripes if you look closely but I'll show you in a real car I painted the black here because I was having trouble getting it to fold onto that so I painted black here and then I laid the decals but cut it in like a W and um, that worked out really nice and follows it like the real car does so um, came out came out excellent even though I built it a couple of times you know two paint jobs and two sets of decals but the second set of decals I figured out do that on this particular one and it worked out really nice for me although now I can probably figured out how to use the setting solution and get that stuff to sit down where back then uh, not so much but you can see I brush painted the cowl cowl's kind of vague and uh, the detail is decent I mean it's an AMT kit but it's not the greatest uh, detail and the accuracy isn't quite like the real car but still very very unique and there's the 71 unique front end the marker lights the headlight bezels and grill are are special for 71 and that's about it when it comes to the stuff for the body the rest of the body is exactly the same AMT has the 1970 um, turn signal marker light molded down here that the 70 Chevelles have in El Caminos all the AMT kits even the 72 that's been reissued many times has that there so you got to sand that off it doesn't belong and uh, I did swap to a, a much later SS rear bumper because the original kit's bumper doesn't have the SS emblem in it. Matter of fact, it doesn't have some of the trim around the taillights, so this is a much more believable rear bumper. But it's from the much later 72 kit. Uh, same thing with the, the valance panel. Uh, it's molded into the bumper where the earlier issues, the valance panel is a separate part. And of course, got to have uh, the SS wheels or Z28 wheels. And then I did the underside here, just painted it up and detailed it fairly nicely. Wish ours was a manual tranny, but it's not. But now it's a four-speed automatic. But for the longest time, the car looked like this. And it's funny because, you know, painted the car in 2000, I think I said. Painted it white and put the stripes on it shortly after that. And 2006 is when I built this. And I swear it wasn't much longer than that that... We decided that uh, we're not driving the car much anymore. Uh, money was starting to come in uh, pretty decently and we had money to play with. So I decided I was going to tear it apart and do a quick paint job. Uh, that turned into 11 years and it wasn't a quick paint job. I uh, ended up being a full-blown pull the body off, frame off restoration slash rebuild because it was a, wasn't restoring it back to stock. We were modifying. We did a lot of stuff to it. So now she's a fun car, a beautiful car. And lots and lots of stories on it. So uh, we love that car. It's my wife's second car. It's the first car she ever bought on her own. Her first car was her money. But her dad went and bought it without her permission. But that's a whole different story. But this is the first car she bought on her own when she was 18. And she still has it today. So it's kind of fun to think about. That was 26 years ago. And we still have that car. Of course, I still have my station wagon too. So like I said, we really don't get rid of anything. You know, my S10 Extreme is a 1999. We bought that brand new um, right before we got married. You know, it, it's stories like that, and it's just uh, so much fun. But this is the only one I've been able to build as far as, you know, model kits go. I'd love to build a 1999 Extreme, but the, the kit is not a 1999. It's a much earlier front end. There was somebody making a resin front end for it, but I never really went after it and bought it. And then, of course, my 71 Fury Wagon, I'd love to build that, but uh, uh, there's one kind of out there, uh, really hard to get the hands on, but the photos I've seen on it, I'm not too particularly thrilled with that one, plus it doesn't really have any of the rest of it. Like, there's the ones I've seen really don't have interior, windows, a chassis. It's like, uh, I don't want to scratch build, all that kind of stuff. I'd rather spend my time on the actual car. 
yeah this is this is a build of a real car and I do have another one unbuilt that I plan to build like her car as it appears pretty much today but I think the jinx of that would be if I do that maybe I'll end up doing it differently or rebuilding the car or changing something but we have no plans to change the car I figure I get a little bit personal and show you show you this uh, 71 Chevelle and tell you about it and the motivation and the build behind it and at one time we did have a 454 for her car and but after putting all that money into the small block and getting everything all set up really didn't make a whole lot of sense to dump a whole lot more money into a big block and put it in the car after you know having the really nicely built small block in it and she runs beautifully and it's always been a cruiser can go pretty much anywhere it's quick but it's not the quickest uh, especially when you start to compare it to the modern performance of today but it's just a, an absolute blast fun car and she handles way better than she ever did as a 1971 in the stock configuration with all the uh, modern tweaks on the suspension without going crazy with it it doesn't have coilovers or anything like that but all the Hotchka suspension really holds it and it sticks and she's a lot of fun to drive we even got the fast ratio steering gearbox in there uh, it's a whole lot of fun to drive. Put vintage air in it, a stereo. So she's far from stock, but she appears stock, and many people assume it's stock, even though the greatest thing I like is her real car has gray interior, and out of all of the interiors that were available in Chevelle's, there was like 16 different interior colors between 70 through 72, but gray was never available in any of those. So when she decided that she would really like gray interiors, like, oh, man gray is so common today but it's so different so when we take the Chevelle to a show problem I have with that is it's still another blue Chevelle there's always Chevelles at shows they're everywhere and especially when I take it to good guys it's not the only blue Chevelle um, matter of fact I got a photo on my phone where we're driving our Chevelle into good guys and the car in front of us is a blue 71 Chevelle so I'll throw that up in there too um, so stick to the end and, and see a lot of these build photos and pictures of this car. But I'm going to throw a bunch of them in there. But thank you for tuning in, subscribing, and uh, all your comments. I really appreciate it. I'd love to hear your comments about your stories and your cars. Uh, I, I love reading those and, and hearing about them. But I figured I would share a bit more on our actual car that we have and built and, and enjoy. And the only model kit I have that's even close to it but it's kind of a point in time model now because of, of that. But anyway, thank you. And you guys, you have a wonderful Saturday and I will talk to you again.